Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part four of my real working exosuit Iron Man arm. I've done three episodes already on the R&D for this project, experimenting with mechanisms, looking at how the axis will be laid out. Obviously it's going to be bigger than this costume arm, and last time I actually came up with this mechanism which looks horrendous. The basic plan is to use blocks and tackles here to pull a big pulley round which will be each joint, and I worked out how that would look for the four axis roughly, so don't forget to check out that part for more, and the first two to look at motors and a potential control system. So this is basically a demo, I know a lot of people commented on this. It's very spindly, it's got some string in it, obviously the string would slip on the pulley, but we're actually going to use some proper things to make this, and now we can actually get on with the proper build, now we've done the research and development. Obviously this isn't a 10 minute build, it's something highly powerful that needs to be designed properly. So we'll look at the parts in a minute, but this is one of them, this is a piece of 20mm steel studding, so it's actually going to have metal in. I've got another big piece of metal here which is actually a massive sprocket and I've got a chain that matches it, so it's going to be pretty industrial. But I did want to just talk about some of the other comments, obviously in part one we looked at electric motors, some people have suggested perhaps I should use hydraulics or pneumatics, but I don't really want to do that due to the fact I'd have to carry around the pump or the compressor and a sump or a reservoir of air or oil. Um, also, you know, we need to control that somehow. And it's much easier to control electric motors with off-the-shelf parts rather than having to buy big valves that will deal with all that hydraulic pressure and so on. Obviously anyone can buy big electric actuators as well and bolt those onto a sort of right angle thing with a hinge in and say that's an exosuit, but obviously that's quite costly and I'd actually like to get this project finished fairly swiftly at least, and that's why I'm doing some of the materials are going to be 3D printed even, uh, but the rest is off the shelf parts and I'm using electric motors, the motor I had was actually an RC one with an RC controller, because they're incredibly powerful now and that's all you really need, so I don't need anything too expensive or too specialist, and I don't need to beg fans for money. So here are some of the things that I've purchased, you'll notice quite a lot of metal on the table, so that's my big sprocket and my chain that goes on it, and that basically will replace the main output, so that will have effectively the elbow attached in this case, and it'll be running on this piece, which is going to be the main upper arm. So that's going to be mounted on this 20mm studding, it already comes with a 20mm hole in. These things came from gearsandsprockets.co.uk, which is run by technobots.com, and uh, this particular one is an 06B, 3 8 of an inch sprocket and chain, so a fairly hefty one. I think it's nearly a ton breaking strain on that chain, so that should be fine for the main output of the axis. Now it's going to be mounted on this studding, I've got nuts and bolts to go on it, lock, uh, lock nuts basically, so it can be bolted up tight, and the uh, bearings for this are these pillow blocks which go on this studding and that's going to mount the elbow axis on so the actual elbow coming off will be bolted to this steel plate and the steel plate will be mounted on these bearings so that should be enough for the main output of all of that force. Now what I did with this design was to spread the load here using these blocks and tackles so my motor and gearbox doesn't have to be very torquey and it can be faster, which takes the load off all these components. So my actual pulleys that I'm going to use are going to be 3D printed, and I've already done one, I've got it here. This has been printed in a filament called Tallman Alloy 910, which is an incredibly tough nylon, and it's got extremely good layer bonding as well. So this is going to be more than strong enough. The cord that's going to run around here is going to be power cord in any case, uh, which is going to be 510 pounds braking strain, which is about a quarter of a ton, but obviously that load is spread among all those components. The only exception is the plates on the side of the pulleys, on the blocks there, which are going to be made of steel, because they do bear the whole load of the force pushing around this part, so those are going to be metal as well. I would have liked to try them in Tallman Alloy, but I just don't think that um, there's going to be enough uh, potential strain ability there. So we've got uh, six mil bearings that go in the middle of this, and these will get stacked up on six mil studding, which should be strong enough, and we'll have another piece across the bottom to actually anchor these to the mechanism. Here comes another one, I'm printing that in 100% infill, so uh, it should make an incredibly tough nylon pulley. And this is the filament, it's not particularly cheap, but it is incredibly strong, and it comes on one pound reels. 
The main structure of this is actually going to be wood. So I've got some timber here. I'm going to paint it silver so it doesn't look like a piece of wood. But with enough of it, it's going to be uh, more than strong enough. And in fact, wood, things like plywood, pound for a pound, are stronger than steel. So it's light and obviously it's really rigid. We can build houses and big structures from it and it's fine. So obviously we do have the steel parts though, which are going to be cross braced. I've got some other steel strips to put across. So that will actually hold the structure. So really we're only looking at the sort of compression and extension force on the actual wood itself. So the plan is one of these uh, bearing blocks will go underneath this. We then have the shaft running all the way through with our big sprocket on. And then we're going to have two more pieces of wood. So it's uh, fairly large. Obviously there's uh, a spacing in between these so that I can get the uh, another triangular piece essentially bolted onto this for the forearm to come out. So I don't have anything to uh, stick in there to space it. In fact, yes I do, let's use these boxes. All right, so we're looking at something more like this. And then we're going to stick the other one of these on top, of course. So that's going to fall down for now, but there will be a gap to allow that forearm to attach, as I say. Then lots of steel bracing around all of this, Probably either brackets they use to build houses, joist hangers, or some other custom ones I'll make out of steel strip. Of course, at the top here, it's not going to be quite this long. It's probably going to be about that long. We can have some shafts that go through here to anchor the top of the thing that pulls here. So we've got those blocks and tackles in there. We can have a rod coming through here. Again, load spread with steel plates, top and bottom, piece of 8mm studding or something bigger, and that can come down. So we've got this kind of triangle going this way, and then we've got another triangle coming in this way. The motor will then mount, of course, in the middle of this, and those strings hopefully kind of come down and come almost in line with the ones that are already triangular shaped. We'll have to look at that motor positioning. It could go much higher up above the shoulder. The shoulder's probably going to be about here. So that's the basic plan at the moment, and I'm going to start putting that together. I've painted my wood silver and I've also put some blocks in, so two more bits of wood to space this out, so it holds itself. And we've also got two more bits of wood which are going to make up the triangle for the arm here. So at some point we need to put some gears and the motor in and the pulleys, and we're pretty much there. So I decided to do a layout in CAD and let's have a look at that. Here's an overview of what we've got so far. Obviously I haven't drawn the sprocket and everything, but the big blue disc there is the sprocket with its bearings and its studding and the bits of wood. And I've got some gears in here and these are the pulleys at the end. So these are going to be mounted on um, some steel studding that goes through the wood. Obviously it could be strengthened up with metal plates on the top and the bottom. And in the middle we've got some gears here. So I've decided for now that I'm going to use spur gears, also uh, printed in Tallman alloy. And I would like to do some planetary gearbox development, but that's going to be a bit more in-depth. Perhaps if this works well, I'll go and make a replacement part. But of course, this thing is just going to drop in and sort of be attached to plates, top and bottom. So as long as it pulls the pulley at the end, then we can put anything in there. So this is really the first go to see that it works and get the right ratios and so on. This big output gear has quite a wide pulley, so the string doesn't get wrapped around itself too much. And it has some holes through the middle there so that we can actually attach an anchor that cord to it and I've decided what's going to happen is the cord's actually going to go up and go round the pulley and then go to the block and tackle then attach to the chain and go around the sprocket. Here are my gears they're all printed in Tallman alloy as I say they were quite long prints this is the main output pulley this was an eight hour print it's 90% solid in Tallman alloy the plan is to put a steel piece of studding through there eight mil studding and mount it on bearings at each end because that is the main output shaft I was going to mount every gear on its own bearings, but I thought that was overkill. So I've just made this little test rig here so I can mount them on 4mm st uh, stainless steel. So this is just to get the spacing correct, which happens to be exactly 51mm. And there seems to be minimal uh, backlash in there. They're not completely tight, but they're not completely loose and they run okay. This one is scraping on the bottom, which is what you can hear there. The output, of course, goes like this. Hopefully that's enough uh, spare space to get lots of cord wrapped around. Otherwise, the little gear at the top here will have to be bigger. I'll have to move this out slightly, but I think I've got enough reduction there. You may remember this gearbox from part one, where I was using this brushless motor to drive um, similar sized gears, although these were ABS and they broke in testing. And the first stage, of course, is the belt drive there, which takes a belt right on the far side of the motor into this gear chain. So what I've got, in fact, is the same thing here. So there's going to be additionally on the thin end of the triangle a motor sitting driving this which drives the whole thing 
and that's a belt drive so it's much easier to couple the motor and it's much more forgiving. Here's my next test assembly so now I've got the big gear in and of course when I turn this they will turn rather well. I think I've got that spacing just about right. This gear is mounted on bearings top and bottom. I've got an 8mm bolt through so that seems to work. You can see it turning. With this thrashing round it might be the right speed then obviously this little pulley here pulls the cord that goes through the blocks and tackles so if it's too slow I can move these around and I can perhaps put this here instead and drive this gear driving this gear driving this and ignore these um, so that will obviously speed it up by a considerable amount but we're going to make a plate now to mount this in the arm and we'll see how it all goes and that looks like this so I've made these tapered pieces that fit in the v-shape of the arm and they have all the same mountings as that test assembly I have holes in one side for the axles but not the other so they don't push through and I've got just enough spacing between the gears there for lots of washers and there'll also be uh, some spacers at the bottom which I'll add later so those gears don't rub on each other so pretty much ready to print that out and we can stick that in. Here's one of my plates ready for printing. I've made some additional holes in it to stop warping across the piece. And um, Basically it allows me to see the gears and things as well so it doesn't need to be completely solid and it'll be as just as strong. Here comes one of those parts on the TAS 6. It's big and I'm printing it in ABS but the bed's really warm so I don't think that's going to warp. It's only 16mm high so I think everything's going to be fine. I've got two plates printed. I printed one in grey because that's what was in the printer. The other one's installed in the bottom there and screwed in. So that will eventually hold the gears that I've made. So I now need to just true this one up. It's going to need to pull these together a bit. And we've got a set square there I can align with the bottom one. And I can work out exactly where it goes. So all of my rods run exactly 90 degrees to the plates. Now this ends all together, it's time to put the bearings on, they're actually going to carry that big sprocket. So these have got 12mm holes in, which is a bit excessive really, even if I wanted to put 12mm bolts through it would be a bit of a problem. They can't go all the way through either because the sprocket's in the middle. So for now I've made these 3D printed inserts that are 100% solid in ABS, and those just fit into the four corners, and that means I can screw that on, I can align them, and then we'll get a hole cutting saw and we'll cut out a bit of a hole there so the 20mm studding can go through. These are a pretty tight fit. So what I've done is drawn a line across the top here and then used a square to draw one down the side there, so that's the line coming down, and I've done the same on the other side, so I've got the two points, then I've drawn a line across here, and now I know exactly where this goes, at least this way and this way. Well, it looks okay, I think. I've unscrewed these again, and I've marked the four holes, and I've put a bit of tape across in across here, so uh, drawing a line here gives me the middle, and then I can use a hole cutting saw that looks like this, in a drill to drill through there and take a little bit off of each side so that the rod can go through with some nuts on unrestricted. Here's one of the washers that goes on that uh, 20 mil studding so Obviously I don't want it to be too tight on the hole, the hole might not be perfectly on centre so I've got a bit of wiggle room there. It's time to attach the forearm bits of wood to the sprocket, so I've got this metal plate here which is for building houses which should be pretty strong. And I've just stuck some tape on here and marked round the outsides so that I know where to mark. And I think I'm just going to put a couple of screws in each side for now. Eventually I'll bolt through but I don't want to drill loads of massive holes in this nice sprocket and ruin it and find they're in the wrong place. So for now it's going to be screwed on, we'll come back and make it stronger later, for now it'll do for testing. Just centre punch those marks.
I've mounted one of those bearings back on there. And now this will go in the middle like so. And obviously the other bearing goes back on top. And then this plate is spaced out with washers and nuts on the 20 mil studding. And there's lots of clearance there. So that can rotate in the middle. I hadn't really planned how I was going to cut through this big piece of studding. A hacksaw will have to do for now since I don't have any other power tools for it. It might take me a while but I'll get there in the end. Predictably my biggest adjustable spanner isn't big enough for the nuts so I've got to use this thing. Which kind of is almost big enough but it's not really meant for this but I can do it anyway so there we go. It's going to take a bit of an effort to get these on. This seems to work better. It's not ideal for the thread in the middle where I'm gripping it, but that's probably where the sprocket's going to be, so hopefully it's going to be okay. I've just taken this to pieces for now, so I can work out what the spacing is, and obviously I need to slot this piece back in. So I've got um, a nut and three washers that side, washer and a nut and another nut and hopefully that's the right spacing to fit that in between the bearings so let's put it back together and see right that's all together it seems to glide round pretty well you can see the end of this bearing turning and they've got little grub screws that i've done up on that studding so that's pretty free to move i realized they needed some spacers so if we look at it this way so that the sprocket can go around the chain and it can grip on both sides so i've put some little spacers in so now I've got just about the same amount of space this side as I have this side. So this whole thing is mounted pretty much in the middle of that. I've printed and installed more pulleys. So I've got three in here and they all move independently. They're all on their own bearings. And those are mounted on a steel piece of six mil studding. Eventually I'll put metal plates on the ends here and screw them on to spread the load at the moment the steel is just through the wood. I've also made the opposing pairs. And again, these are on bearings and these go down here and these are steel brackets with another piece of six mil studding the chain can be wrapped round and bolted to itself so that pulls against these and the other end of course goes round the big sprocket at the bottom so i put the gearbox together inside here i've also got the motor fitted on this lovely plastic bracket which is only for testing obviously the motor does get warm and uh, abs isn't the best material but that's attached with the drive belt you can just see there it's hooked up to the same old motor driver, which is one for a quadcopter that's 30 amps and it only goes in one direction. I've got a LiPo, an RC receiver, same as I had in part one, and a radio control handset. So now I can actually power this up. So uh, one thing I will say is that the gears do wobble a bit, and that's because the holes in the middle were a bit smaller and I bored them out by hand with a drill bit. And it doesn't look like I did them all straight. So there is a bit of wobble and it is a bit noisy, but anyway, let's just power that up. So you can see them running slightly off centre there and it's a bit noisy but it'll do for testing. In the future I'd like to do a planetary gearbox design which I might do after this. So this is the main output shaft and again the cords go round these pulleys and then round the blocks and tackles up and down. So this is the actual speed that I get from the gearbox at least but not the final speed it's going to pull that chain. <laughs> So I think that's an okay speed actually. It's a, maybe a bit on the slow side, but at least I'll have more power. I'm stringing up the blocks and tackles from that pulley round these pulleys multiple times with this, which is paracord. And this is a 500 pound braking strain, which is about a quarter of a metric ton. And obviously there's multiple lines going round and round and round. So that's not the weakest point by any means. And that then couples to the chain with its ton braking strain around this sprocket. So that should be more than strong enough so this is the outside of the arm. My arm will be on the inside of that on the other side. So in fact, this chain only needs to start from a straight thing because I don't bend my elbow backwards, which will be further that way. And realistically, only probably needs to come about that far. It can't go much further anyway because there's an end stop and we'll try and get as close to it as we can. But uh, that's about it. So it doesn't actually have to pull these chains back and forth very far at all. Right, I think it's something like this, which seems about right. That's the shortest I can make the chain. I've got a bit of spare there in case I need it. I've bolted the chain to itself here, but I can only get M3 bolts through, which I think might be a weak spot. They might actually shear, uh, but we'll see how it goes. 
So this side is now strung up with lots and lots of cord and the other side is just restrained with a bungee cord so I can get it nice and tight. So now I need to winch this side up so it's shorter, let that one out and then put the string on the other side with that longer and this shorter and that'll have enough cord in the end. Right, we're all strung up and we can give that a spin and bend the arm. It's pretty slow. So it's pretty slow, but it's probably got a lot of power. You'll notice here the cord goes onto one at the bottom and onto the other one at the top so it uh, doesn't wrap itself around itself on the pulley there and that seems to work quite nicely. The whole thing is pretty rigid, if I grab this I can really, really not bend this so there's hardly any backlash in the whole system. It's pretty rigid once it's set in place it's stuck there at the moment i have to change the wires over on the motor to get it to go in reverse eventually i will have a reversible motor driver of course probably a bigger battery and i might even have a different motor but this will do for a test now so we can see what it does right i've strung it up so now i can hang weights on the bottom and we'll see how much it can lift the first test is two eight kilogram kettlebells i'm going to keep an eye on this so i can see if anything goes wrong so i'm going to stand up here Keep an eye on the gears and so on, but let's see what it does. So I just wanted to show that even with the weight still hung on there, that thing's pretty rigid still. I can't push it back. It's, I can't pull it up either. It's pretty much locked. All of the gears look good, all of this stuff looks good, it's still completely in one piece. So we'll put that back down, put some more weight on. Right, we're going up a bit now, so this is two 10 kilogram uh, weights. It says 10 kilograms on them there, I don't know if you can see it. Well, that seems fine as well. Right, so I've put the two 10 kilogram weights on and both eight kilogram kettlebells, so that's uh, 36 kilograms altogether. I'm gonna have to wait for it to lift those off the box this time, because I'm not strong enough to lift 36 kilograms with one hand and move the box with the other one. All right. All right, looks pretty good. So I lowered it down a little bit more. The only thing I noticed happened was that the tricep here, the, the cord has gone slack. So obviously there is some stretch in this blue cord and all of the tensions on the front there on the bicep. So uh, that's definitely got enough strength to lift it. All my gears are still perfectly intact. And remember that the 3D printed gearbox is not actually taking all of the load due to the blocks and tackles, which are then multiplying that up by five times the force. And remember that this is the motor that's driving it all, which is a rather small brushless RC motor, and you can check out part one for more on that. So I'm pretty happy of how that's turned out, the first go at building an actual axis of the arm. And remember there are four axes there, three at the shoulder and one at the elbow, so I still need to replicate this four more times and build that into something that I can carry around to make my arm stronger. And of course the obvious thing is that I won't actually be able to lift the weight with my back and legs, so if that works well then the plan is to build the legs as well. There's a few things I need to tune and tweak on this, so mainly I need to do some work on the gearbox development. Um, this one works fine of course with the 3D printed plastic gears and spreading the load over those blocks and tackles, but I could actually do with something that's maybe more compact, perhaps a planetary gearbox, and something more precise built to a higher tolerance. So I think I'm going to have a go at that next time. The other thing is this is actually quite heavy. The steel in here, and I use wood obviously to make it lighter, but the steel bearing blocks and the steel sprocket actually weigh quite a bit. So I probably need to rethink that and see if there's some lighter materials I can use. I could of course cut massive holes in the sprocket 
so that it weighs less, but that's um, going to be a bit of a challenge. So I need to do some thinking there as well. As I said, I already have enough budget to in fact build all four axes, and that's because I'm using 3D printing and cheaper parts like RC car parts. Although if you want to support me on Patreon, you can, and you can get all my videos early and various other benefits. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots. And don't forget to check out my other projects, including my walking gonk droid project, and also the real Ultron project, which is a robot torso that's gonna be partly driven by its own AI. All right, that's all for now.